The most recognized Uruguayan painter of his generation, Ignacio Ituria is known for his surreal interpretations of memory and psychological space. Distilled with the atmosphere of his hometown, Montevideo, Ignacio's paintings are rich with earth tones, evoking the murky waters of the Rio de la Plata. Ignacio spent the bulk of his childhood indoors, substituting the pastoral landscape of Montevideo for a confined ecosystem of furniture and household items. The solitude Ignacio experienced is palpable in his paintings. Austere rooms are cast in subdued colors, populated sparsely by diminutive, wiry figures. Yet his compositions suggest a warm nostalgia for this isolation. His stick figures, dwarfed by comically large furniture, recall a childlike sense of play. A known recluse and night owl, Ignacio sleeps through the day and paints through the night. Yet despite his monkish habits, he is never truly alone. Just as the artist's painted figures are strewn about a landscape of mixed references and objects, he paints in his studio surrounded by a motley crew of comics, figurines, and works in progress. Ignacio describes his imagined audience that watches him work, saying, Cuando estoy en el estudio, a veces pienso que tengo un anfiteatro con todos los personajes que quiero y que admiro. Están ahí y me acompañan. At the start of his career, geometric abstraction and conceptual art were taking center stage. These movements advocated for images that conceal the artist's hand, free of figuration and overt storytelling. In contrast, Ignacio's process and creations refuse this disconnect and depend on an exchange with the past. We see ourselves in Ignacio's paintings, imbued with memories, experience, cultural icons, and emblems of urban life. The artist advocates for clumsiness, stating, Antes yo buscaba el virtuosismo. Estaba sentado con el pincel y apoyado en el menique. La pintura salía perfecta, pero usar la espátula sin apoyo, la vibración es diferente, según mi estado de ánimo. La espátula me ayudó a expresar mi esmerada torpeza para conformar mi mundo de una manera más íntima y más comunicativa. Ignacio's painting style formally manipulates perspective to deconstruct physical space and construct psychological space in its place. He builds rich textures with heaping doses of oil paint applied directly on traditional canvas as well as unconventional surfaces like corrugated cardboard and mixed media sculptures. The lush textures of his paintings defy the picture planes prescribed to dimensionality. The fictive shadows and painted figures contend with their planet condition. Further contesting paintings ordained flatness, Ignacio's painted sculptures transgress the barrier between his painted universe and our three-dimensional reality. By breaching conventions of physical space, he cultivates a psychological space shared between painting and viewer. Ignacio's paintings are both windows into his zany multiverse and a mirror held up to contemporary society. Viewers observe the isolated scenes of miniaturized humans navigating a world of disproportionately large furniture. As a child, Ignacio's landscape shrank to the size of his living room, so that the most elephantine landmass in his vicinity was a couch. The contained urban living spaces Ignacio paints expose how the domestic fixtures have shrunk in our landscape, substituting oceans for sinks and mountains for shelves. His stick figures are faceless, constituting an anonymous collective. Just as urban life has scaled down the dimensions of our reality, prescribed routines and obligations have allowed the artifice of utility to overtake our identities. Viewed through the lens of the COVID-19 pandemic, Ignacio's painted scenarios resonate with the viewer even more precisely. The months of social distancing have intensified our sense of alienation and loneliness as we seek new ways of connecting in place of human touch. 
we can identify with his lonesome figures who meander through a fog of memories. But just as the drama of his paintings presents comedy and tragedy as two sides of the same coin, we can see Ignacio's sincere optimism that shines through the hazy sfumato. There is potential in our newfound downtime to re-examine the way we assign meaning to the world. Before the pandemic, narcissism seemed to rule our way of life. We distinguished ourselves by the company we kept, the jobs we held, and the places we went. Many of these labels have fallen away in isolation, prompting us to delve deeper than the surface level and self-reflect. As we continue staying at home, Ignacio's surreal paintings remind us that our imagination's reach is far beyond our doorstep. The optimism that permeates the Uruguayan painter's world is uncannily paralleled to the success that Uruguay as a country has had in fighting the pandemic. Around the globe, the pandemic has revealed the immense fractures and weaknesses of our societies. In contrast, Uruguay's participatory democracy, low-income inequality, and expansive social policies primed the country for the pandemic. By the end of June, the country had reported just 932 cases since the pandemic began and 27 deaths. In particular, what is so striking about the country's response to the pandemic is their decisiveness and compassion. Uruguay did not implement a full lockdown, instead asking people to practice voluntary social distancing. Their willingness to sacrifice their known way of life for the greater good is evidence of a more optimistic social attitude. For those of us still in the throes of the pandemic, we can look to this as a lesson in what it means to be connected. Though social distancing presents a physical disconnect, it nurtures a deeper understanding of how our individual lives are inextricably linked to each other. Ignacio's painted universe proposes a surreal world that does not exist in dreams, but rather awakens us from our collective slumber. His nostalgic stick figures and playful disproportion reignite our childlike sense of wonder and optimism. The textured surface of his paintings and accompanying sculptures contend with the picture plane and frame, inviting the viewer to cast away conventional physical space to enter a shared psychological space. He transforms the mundane into the surreal and unites his viewers in a shared humanity that is impossible to divide or categorize.